Well, I mean, it's widely known that China's demographic outlook is, is pretty poor, um, but I think a lot of people are still underestimating, un underestimating quite how, how poor it is. Uh, if you look at sort of the consensus population projections, they're essentially assuming that the worst has already happened, that the fertility rate has bottomed out and it will start to rebound. Uh, and that includes the UN's medium term fertility projections, which is what most people use. Um, but if we look at the marriage rate, which tends to be sort of a leading uh, indicator for, for the birth rate, it's still plunging. Um, last year, it fell to its lowest in, in four decades. So there are certainly no um, that the fertility rate is bottoming out. Uh, and we've seen uh, in other countries uh, in East Asia, Korea, Japan, how difficult it can be um, to get the fertility uh, rate to, to recover. And in Korea, it's still declining, despite being much lower than it, than it is in China. Um, so I think in all likelihood, uh, you know, most projection, uh, demographic projections are still too optimistic uh, for China and will likely have to be re revised down further. Uh, in terms of the property market, you know, marriage is a key sort of um, event in terms of triggering property sales uh, in China. Uh, and with a lot fewer marriages taking place, you know, it's one of the reasons why we're seeing this structural decline uh, in housing demand in China. And I think that's a really important thing to remember is that the problems in the Chinese property sector are not just cyclical in nature. Uh, even once the current cyclical headwinds ease, there's still going to be these structural drag, drags on the sector, which are going to continue for, for many years.